We want to talk about a fundraiser that is taking place on the 5th of December. It's called Phil the Aviva for Philly. It's being organised for Philip Caldwell, a well-known face of club rugby in Dublin who recently suffered a severe spinal injury which left him with temporary paralysis from the neck down. The accident occurred during a tag rugby match on the 13th of July. And I'm delighted to say Philip is with us this morning. Philip, good morning to you. Morning, guys. How are you? How are you getting on? Not too bad. It's uh, It's been a bit of a whirlwind since that uh, fateful day back in July. Um, an awful lot's happened. I've gone from spending three months in uh, the Matter Hospital to now being transferred over to the NRH, which is just an amazing facility. A, a real, uh, to use a rugby term, a real academy, a real, uh, just a, 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 a mecca for getting everybody is as close back to as we can possibly get to with the extensive um, training, I suppose, I, I'd sort of call, call it. I, I have extensive sort of hydrotherapy where I'm in the pool. I've got physiotherapy and then occupational therapy uh, for my hands and stuff like that. So it's it's definitely been a huge whirlwind from, from that fateful night where I was just running out to play a tag game with a bunch of friends to having the life sort of turned a bit up on its head, you know? Will you take us back to to, to the tag rugby? Because I, I presume, like everybody, um, lockdown, peak lockdown, everybody thinks they're never going to get back doing any sport, and then sport re-emerges in all our lives, and I'd say we were never as thankful for the opportunity to get out and see other people and do things that felt vaguely normal at the time. So you must have been incredibly excited when the tag rugby season comes back. What actually happened? Well, that was exactly it. I got I, I, I got a phone call, a random phone call. I'm, I'm going to give a small plug to myself here. Many, many years ago, I managed to play Leinster under 21s rugby, and uh, so you're a ringer. I actually got a, a ringer. Exactly. I, I was the hired in pace that night. So uh, basically, I got a phone call from my old rugby coach who actually selected me for Leinster under 21s to say, would I come down and play a a social tag rugby game. So I was pumped up thinking, ah, this over 35s gig, I could be the wheels and turn back the clock and all that. So I arrived down and actually, as, as, as fate would have it, lands down, the club that I played for uh, were on the pitch directly opposite me. So I noticed a few faces and was kind of a little bit cocky, sort of saying, geez, you, you didn't give me the call for that one, lads. Uh, I'll show you what you're missing out on, on, on this pitch here beside. So I arrived down, I was there. Uh, Sorry. Um, That's all right. Last person to uh, pick up the tags and just ran out like like anybody would. Um, and the game, game was literally 20 minutes old. Got the ball in my hands, made a few jigs as I often do, and uh, crossed over to score the try and then just wallop hit, 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 the, hit the fence. And the, the next thing I remember, I was sort of... Um, I was sort of sprawled out. I'd, I'd, I'd had a gash to my head from hitting the fence, and I vividly remember everybody um, looking around me, um, and they were worried about the gash in my head, because obviously it was pumping blood or what have you. But um, that was the least of my worries. I knew straight away, no, this isn't good. So instantly, I, I fell back onto my onto my back, and then went to the ground and. Just couldn't feel my legs. Right. So, uh, yeah, that that was that, that that was a bit of a shock. I remember actually just calling out for an old rugby mate. There was a mate of mine, Andy Talon, giving him a plug out, and I was just calling for him. I just needed to see a, a face because it was uh, it was such a shock, you know. So initially, that like I said, that the uh, actually Lansdowne were playing the College of Surgeons that day, and um, there was people on site within seconds, do you know what I mean? Making sure I was in the right position and everything was done. And I was very, very coherent for the whole whole lot of it. They, they got the ambulance out and, and I was rushed off to the Matter Hospital, which is the number one hospital for spinal cord injuries. So I was in, basically couldn't have had better uh, care from, from literally second one. Um, I spent a full week in the HDU then um, where they were sort of trying to they pumped me full of steroids because I, I, I have a crack to the spinal cord, which led to a bleed into it. And then basically what they were trying to do was stop that bleed and then look to see what, what the extent of the damage was. And then from there, they'd be able to um, 
sort of lay out a care plan. So I, like I said, I had three months there. Um, I actually, it's weird. I, 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 a very close friend of mine, a bit of a mentor of mine, Steve MacGyver, um, he, he would have a, a doctorate in mental toughness and peak performance. So within two or three days, not even three days, I had a phone call for him and from him and we, uh, we sat down and, and said, "How are we gonna? How are we gonna look at this? How, how are we gonna reframe this?" And it's it's been something that has really, really uh, changed my whole outlook on, on the injury. So we kind of first said that this is a tragedy. Okay, this is this is what's about to happen to us, but it leads to a challenge. And at the moment now, it's the biggest challenge I've ever faced, but yet one I really, really am taking on and and tackling. Um, it's like the the biggest rugby team I've ever trained for. So. Um, from that, uh, we sort of just set out some goals, and I've just been attacked. I've, I've had an unbelievable, like you said, you've you've, you've mentioned the uh, the the outcry there, Phil De Aviva for Philly. Like I just can't stress enough. I'm even well up a, a bit here now. Think about the the outpour from the rugby community, from my own community, from my family. It's just been spurring me on to get up and do sessions. Like so, basically, the hardest thing about this. Uh, situation. Uh, I'll give a small example. Dan Levy, I was in the rugby, or uh, I was at the Aviva whenever he did his cruise shit. So he'd have met with people. They said, right, there's going to be 15, 18 months and you're going to have to do hard, hard work and get back. And I'm watching him now really quietly going about his business, putting his hand up again, maybe for Irish selection, and more power to him. But the hardest thing about this is they don't know, they can't tell you, Phil, look, if you follow A, B, C, and D, and I'll do A, B, C, and D, and X, Y, and Z, it doesn't matter what, what I'm told to do, because you know the more you put in, the more potential you're going to get out. Um, but the hardest bit about it is not knowing on the other end. They can't tell you exactly what's going to come back. So I get these tiny incremental gains, these small little things like, Started off in the matter, it was just twitches of my finger. I had an unbelievable OT who came in and worked an hour with me every single day. And basically, you know, small things just going back like a twitch of my fingers. So you just, all these little incremental things, but it's been it's been a part of it that's been quite beautiful as well. You know, if, if I took everything away from you and then slowly just drip fed you things back, uh, it's amazing how appreciative you become of things. So and it's going to be a long road. It's, it's a, this is a two-year fight. So they say you can continue to get gains in the spinal cord for up to two years. So it's just about getting in that right mindset. And then the last thing that, that, uh, that Coach Steve McGuire says to me is, out of, this, out of this challenge might come opportunities. And look, who listen, I, I listen to off the ball all the time and here's an opportunity now to just get out and tell a story. Because also, the one thing I will say is I've had to deal with this COVID as well, like everybody. But everybody's hurting at the moment. So there's, uh, you know, everybody, I think everybody can relate to sort of feeling depressed and a little bit down at this time. And and it's it's not dwelling on that. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's I'm going to, I allow myself to have bad days. That's, that's a thing I'm learning. I'm allowed to have a bad day. And that's okay, but it's. I suppose we we talk about adversity and 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 coming through stuff. It's about how you deal with that bad day, because the sun comes up the following day sometimes, and you just got to go and power on from that. And I think everybody's in that situation now with this COVID sort of thing. You know, where since we've gone down to stage five, we're all on sort of lockdown, wondering, geez, is this ever going to end? So yeah, no, it's it's definitely given me the. the big word I'd say from this injury that I've got is perspective. You can change anything with a good perspective, you know, and, and like I said, that's I'm not a hero who's always bubbling around. I, I am generally upbeat, but uh, you'll have your bad days, power through them, and yeah, I, I, again, just been thankful for everything. I've, when it comes back, it's, again, I, I get slagged because of the newspaper and um, uh, put it up in things like small things like squeezing toothpaste out of a toothpaste holder. I didn't think I'd be able to. Just small little things that come back to you and you're just going, wow. So, yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. Philip, it's, it's remarkable. Like uh, the, the way you managed to have that positive mindset already, even before talking to your friend, even before talking to experts, it seems that that was very much bedded in within you already throughout your life. Is that fair to say that that, that positive outlook is? 
a, a huge thing for you going through this right now, that, that you've always looked at, at ways out of situations or, or ways to, to help yourself and get the best out of a situation? A hundred percent. But when this comes in, like I, I've, so I'd say I've drawn on a couple of things. I've drawn, like I said, I, when we reframed it as this is a challenge, this is the biggest rugby team you're ever going to have to make. It, it, that just brought, you know, I, I was a couple inches too short to play whatever grade I was getting. I wasn't, you know, and I used everything I had to get as far as I got. Do you know what I mean? I would have always had that drive. Uh, the lads that know me would slag and definitely have a little bit of little man syndrome in me and, and stuff like that. So I've drawn on all that. But the one thing I will say is I've sort of, again, looked at the look my mate, Steve McGyver. We, we've sort of looked at that. He, he'd sort of asked me, I'd fill in certain things like, what's my positivity like? What's my, you know, what's my focus like? What's my, uh, my, my state of happiness and sort of that. And I'm, I'm starting to sort of grade those sort of things. So I think it's in everybody. Do you know what I mean? I, mm. I've, I've had a good outlook on it, but I think it's it's incumbent on everybody when you're in a certain situation. If you're able to look at stuff, you can have a different outlook on it. I, again, I, I don't think... A small analogy I gave, if in the morning everybody woke up, I heard this about COVID, that some people catch it, they only come back with about 60% of their respiratory system. That's, that's a potential flaw or a, a thing that can happen if you catch the COVID. If in the morning everybody only had 60% of their uh, breathing capacity and you were told you have to do follow all the rules to get back to the last 40%, I guarantee everybody would follow those exact rules because there's just no way you would want to get back to your full breathing capacity. So I'm a little bit like that in that it's been a river that they haven't been able to tell me how much I'm going to get back. But when I look at my left here now, and I've got these, so the last thing to come back for me is my hands, which is quite tough because like I said I'm an active rugby player I play a bit of golf and stuff like that but I've, I've got things in my so I've got these electric shock therapy that I get in my hands and I've got squidgy balls and I've got I, I thread uh, for fine motor neuron uh, um, uh, things I, I, I file stuff through uh, a little piece of lace and stuff like that to, to try and get that, that back and every time I think about not doing that I was thinking oh, I'll give myself I just look at my hands and that's my reminder no it's not an option. It's not an option to give up. It's not an option to not do it because you want it back. So, yeah, it's it, it's kind of again just that reframing piece. You know, everybody's struggling now. I've, I've got friends who, who are at home, and you know, people who are living in apartments on their own and stuff like that. And it's this COVID has been isolating, but it's also bringing us all together with that sort of. I can't wait for this Christmas. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 where I, I, I like Christmas anyway, but like. This one is just going to be an extra special one because yeah. I've been told there's a that I get out. So it's 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 weird. It's how you reframe it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're all we're all finding it tough, but yeah. Philip, it's unbelievable bravery. We might check in on you in a couple of months' time as well, particularly when um, after we fill the Aviva. Uh, yeah. It's a remarkable story. We wish you the very very best, though. It's it is real bravery, and thanks a million for being able to share it. I know it's unbelievably difficult to to talk about it. It is very early stage. It must be so raw. But you've done a great job with us here this morning, and thanks a million. Okay, listen, really appreciate it, guys. Keep up the good work. I love the show. Thanks a million. Philip Caldwell there. And just to give you the details on this, so obviously we want as many people as possible to buy virtual tickets for Ireland and the game that they're playing. It's probably going to be against France, Italy or Scotland. At this stage, probably Scotland. Uh, the aim is to sell 51,700 tickets, i.e. every seat in the Aviva. Tickets are a tenner, single ticket for a tenner. All the money raised will go to the Philip Caldwell Trust, which will be used to financially assist Philly in his recovery. So that's rehab, physio, home adaptations, you can see that it's going to be a long job. These funds will help provide the support needed for him to help try and get back the life that he was living prior to the 13th of July. Any excess funds in the trust obviously will be donated to the IRFU Charitable Trust, which supports other injured sports people in the rugby community. And it's, um, we'll, we'll tweet the link, it's ftaforphilly.com.